Hi everyone, welcome to session 2. In this session, we are going to discuss about biomicromolecules. These students, we know about two fractions. One is acid soluble pool and acid insoluble pool. So this acid insoluble pool is also called as macromolecular fractions because of they include macromolecules from cytoplasm and organelles. And the molecular weight of macromolecules is more than 1000 Daltons is more than 1000 Daltons. So these macromolecules include proteins, polysaccharides, polysaccharides and nucleic acid, nucleic acids. So little later we will discuss about this. Now we will discuss the average composition of cells which means uh, the percentage of macromolecules or macromolecules in cells average composition of cells see in cells the water water is 70 to 90 percent and carbohydrates carbohydrates 3 percent proteins proteins 10 to 15 percent and lipids lipids 2 percent nucleic acids nucleic acids 5 to 7 percent remaining ions or 1 percent so these are all average composition of cells okay so water is 70 to 90 percent carbohydrate 3 percent proteins 10 to 15 percent lipid 2 percent nucleic acid 5 to 7 percent ions 1 percent so these are all average composition of cells now let's discuss the macromolecules the first one is proteins yes dear students we know but proteins are the building blocks of amino acids they are also called heteropolymer, hetero, heteropolymer. See, heteropolymer, which means hetero, which means different. Okay, it is derived from two or more monosaccharides. Okay, so the proteins is a heteropolymer, which means sequence of amino acids, and they are also called polypeptide polypeptide which means the sequence of or the chain of amino acid is linked by polypeptide bond yes how this uh, polypeptide bond will form it see this polypeptide bond will form when one amino acid of acidic group is react with another amino acid of amino group so by the elimination of water which means hydration so the result formation of peptide bond see we can observe here this is the one amino acid this is second amino acid see here elimination of water molecules or releasing water molecules or dehydration so this is called peptide bond peptide bond yes one amino acid of acidic group is react with another amino acid of amino group to releasing the water molecules which means dehydration so by formation of yes formation of peptide bond okay so proteins are the heteropolymer which means different which means derived from two or more mono saccharides and it is a polypeptide chain 
polypeptide which means sequence of amino acids are linked by peptide bond how these peptide bond are formed one amino acid of acidic group is a react with another amino acid of amino group by the releasing of water which means dehydration formation of peptide bond functions of proteins Dear students, the proteins involved in many functions like growth and cell repair and function as antibodies and function as pigments and function as enzymes, function as hormones. So there are several functions are performed by proteins. Yes, the first one is which helps to development of growth and cell repair cell repair and transport of nutrients uh, across the cell membrane also helps to transport of nutrients across the cell membrane example glucose transporter 4 which is helps to enables the glucose into the cytoplasm yes the third one is the proteins act as intercellular ground substance example collagen we know about collagen the proteins act as intercellular ground substance ground substance example collagen yes dear students we know about collagen collagen is the main component in uh, connective tissues and the proteins act as antibodies antibodies to fight against infectious organism to fight against infectious organism and some proteins are uh, act as receptors act as receptors example receptors of uh, smell taste and hormones and some proteins are hormones, act as hormones. Example, insulin. Insulin. And some proteins are act as enzymes. Example, trypsin. And some proteins uh, functions like pigments. Pigments. Example, hemoglobin. Example, hemoglobin. Yes. The most abundant protein in the animal world that is called collagen. And the most abundant protein in the biosphere, biosphere that is called rubisco. See rubisco, which means ribulose, biphosphate, carboxylase, oxygenase. So this is the most abundant protein present in biosphere. The most abundant in animal world that is called uh, collagen protein. The most abundant protein in biosphere that is called rubisco. Rubulose, biphosphate, carboxylase, oxygenase. So these are all the uh, functions of uh, protein which helps to development of uh, growth and uh, cell repair, transport of nutrients across the cell membrane. Example, glucose transporter 4 which is enables to glucose into the cytoplasm and it's also act as intercellular ground substance. Example collagen, we know about collagen is the main component in connective tissues and act as antibodies to fight against the infectious organisms and act as receptors, example receptors of smell, taste and hormones and some proteins are hormones, example insulin and some proteins are enzymes, trypsin and some proteins are pigments example hemoglobin yes the next concept is uh, structural levels of protein yes uh, dear students in this uh, structural levels of protein we are going to observe primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure and uh, quaternary structure of protein yes the first one is primary structure yes the primary structure of protein is described by sequence of amino acid which means positional information in a protein here, the left end of the chain has first amino acid that is called N-terminal amino acid. That 
that is called n terminal amino acid and the right end of the chain has last amino acid that is called c terminal amino acid c terminal amino acid so this is the primary structure of uh, protein yes the next one is secondary structure yes the secondary structure of protein here one more polypeptide chain are folded in the form of helix are folded in the form of helix so illi enagutte antandre one more polypeptide chain agutte add agutte added and folded in the form of helix and the helix is right handed example for secondary structure of protein keratin and fibroin fibroin is a silk fiber fibroin is a silk fiber yes these are all about uh, secondary structure of protein yes the next one is tertiary structure of protein tertiary structure see in tertiary structure here the tertiary structure of a uh, protein shows here the helical polypeptide chain further folded like a halo woolen ball halo woolen ball it shows uh, 3d weave like this this is the tertiary structure of protein okay so here the helical polypeptide chain further folded like a halo woolen ball so it is the 3d weave of protein and the tertiary structure is necessary for many biological activities of proteins example myoglobin myoglobin and some enzymes and some enzymes so this is the uh, tertiary structure of protein the last one is yes, in quaternary structure of protein one more polypeptide chain is added and form quaternary structure and here each chain function as subunits of protein see example is hemoglobin example hemoglobin hemoglobin so here presence of two beta units and two alpha units alpha so this is the quaternary structure of proteins these are all structural levels of uh, proteins in primary structure the left end of the chain has the first amino acid that is called n terminal amino acid and the right end of the chain has the last amino acid that is called c terminal amino acid in secondary structure one more polypeptide chain is added to form helix right handed helical helical polypeptide chain example keratin and fibroin is a silk fiber and and in tertiary structure the helical polypeptide chain further folded like a halo woolen ball it shows a 3d weave the tertiary structure is necessary for many biological activities of a protein example myoglobin and enzymes in quaternary structure here one more polypeptide chain is added to form quaternary structure and here each chain function as subunits of protein example hemoglobin the hemoglobin contain two subunits one is beta another one is alpha the next concept is polysaccharides is polysaccharides is also called complex carbohydrates complex carbohydrates yes see a uh, polysaccharides which is derived from uh, two or more monosaccharides is also called a chain of sugars chain of sugars 
chain of sugars yes it includes cellulose glycogen starch and inulin and inulin yes cellulose glycogen and starch uh, these are all polymer of glucose polymer of glucose and the inulin is a polymer of fructose polymer of fructose totally both are homopolymers which means same homo means same homo polymers see here the starch it forms a secondary structure of helix secondary structure of structure of helix so hence it holds iodine molecules that iron molecules holds in the alkyl position that's why it gives blue color blue color yes but cellulose has no complex helix that's why it cannot hold iodine molecules yes in right side we can observe a diagrammatic representation of a portion of glycogen dear students there are some uh, complex uh, polysaccharides present in nature which means they are the building blocks amino sugar and uh, chemically modified sugars example glucosamine glucosamine and n acetyl glucosamine acetyl glucosamine see example for n acetyl glucosamine chitin see uh, we know about chitin uh, chitin is the homopolymer of n acetyl glucosamine we know about uh, chitin chitin present in exoskeleton of uh, arthropods and the cell wall of uh, fungi also made up of chitin yes this is all about uh, polysaccharides polysaccharides also called complex carbohydrates a chain of sugars they include uh, cellulose glycogen starch and inulin they are both are homo polymers and here the starch forms helical secondary structure as it can hold the iron molecule in the position of helix it gives blue color but cellulose uh, cannot form helical structure and it cannot hold iron molecule and uh, some uh, uh, polysaccharides are complex complex polysaccharides see these complex polysaccharides present in nature and they are building blocks amino sugar chemically modified sugars example glucosamine and n acetyl glucosamine see so chitin um, chitin example is chitin chitin is a homopolymer of n acetyl glucosamine um, this chitin is uh, present in exoskeleton of arthropods you know, for example crabs agirbodu okay. and present in cell wall of fungi yes. and one more thing glycosidic bond in polysaccharides see this glycosidic bond formed between two monosaccharides of carbon atoms and also by the process of dehydration the next concept is nucleic acid yes nucleic acid which is present in inside the nucleus uh, there are two types of nucleic acid one is dna and rna so dna is a deoxy ribonucleic acid deoxy ribo nucleic acid rna is a ribonucleic acid see nucleic acid is a heteropolymer which means here uh, it contains two polynucleotide chains let's discuss the uh, secondary structure of dna secondary structure of dna deoxyribonucleic acid see why it is called deoxyribonucleic acid because of absence of one oxygen atom in the position of dna molecule that's why it's called a deoxyribonucleic acid the secondary structure of dna was proposed by watson and crick watson and crick 
Okay. See, there are different types of uh, DNA, or A, B, C, D, E. And the DNA containing two polynucleotide chains, they run anti-parallel to each other. See, in right side, we can observe presence of two strands. One is 5 prime to 3 prime, another one is 3 prime to 5 prime. Both are running anti-parallel to each other. And the DNA main components are deoxyribosugar. Deoxyribosugar and phosphate, phosphate and nitrogen base and nitrogen base. So these are all the components of uh, DNA. So these are all the main components of DNA: deoxyribosugar, phosphate, and nitrogen base. The backbone of DNA is formed by sugar, phosphate, chain sugar. See here, nitrogen base are two types. One is purine and pyrimidine. Already we discussed about this. And presence of adenine and guanine, cytosine and thymidine. Here, the adenine always pair with thymidine. The guanine always pair with cytosine. The adenine always pair with thymidine by two hydrogen bonds. And the gonine always pair with cytosine by three hydrogen bonds. And in DNA, uracil is absent. In DNA, uracil is absent. But in case of RNA, uracil is present instead of thymine. In right side, we can observe the presence of two polynucleotide chains, which means a double stranded DNA. It shows uh, deoxyribose sugar and uh, presence of phosphate and nitrogen bases. See, I already told you about there are different types of DNA, A, B, C, D, E. In B DNA, each 10 base pairs, the DNA will rotate. This is called guide. And the length of 10 base pair is 34 angstroms. And each base pair has 3.4 angstroms. An angle in each step is 36 and 10 base pairs 360 degree angle so this is all about uh, dna and dear students in this session we had discussed about uh, biomacromolecules the biomolecules having molecular weight more than 1000 daltons they include proteins polysaccharides and nucleic acid proteins are the hydropolymers of amino acid sequence of amino acid linked by peptide bond and functions of proteins and structure levels of proteins like a primary structure, secondary structure, a tertiary structure, and a quaternary structure. And polysaccharides that include uh, you know, glycogen, starch, and cellulose, and chitin, and complex carbohydrates. The polysaccharides is also called complex carbohydrates. And the last one is the nucleic acid. The nucleic acid types DNA and RNA. And the secondary structure of DNA proposed by Watson and Crick, the DNA components are deoxyribose sugar, phosphate, and the nitrogen base. And the next session, we will discuss about metabolism. Thank you.